that's me again, your grade 7 kid, your teacher, teacher, Jean Rose Biraba, no? And welcome to our episode 6 in the discussion of our module in Technology and Livelihood Education, specifically the course of Fish Processing for grade 7 and grade 8. Last time, we discussed cost of production. And we were able to answer three basic questions about the cost of production or the production cost. First question that we were able to answer, what is production cost? The second question is, why do we need to do production cost or cost of production? What is the importance of it? Third, how is it being done? For our today's lesson, we will be entering to a new topic on fish processing and join me as we discuss and as we discover different concepts about it. processing. But before that, let us meet our guest for today who will be joining us as we start our lesson for week 6. Are you excited? Are you ready? Okay, let's meet our guest for today and she is Hello Kitty! And Hello Kitty wants to say hello! Hi! He also, she also wants to know, how are you today? Okay, it's good to know that you are all better and you are doing great today. So I think we're all ready, we're all set. And to start our activity for today, let's have a game. You want to play a game? Okay. So let's have a game and she just wants to know if you want to have fun and since you already say yes and you want to play a game, let's start and let's play. So let's start our game for Clash. today which is fact or bluff. Yo. Are you familiar with fact or bluff? It's just somehow the same with true or false but it's fact or bluff. All you have to do in this activity is to identify whether what I will be flashing or the sketch that I will be flashing is applicable or is correct with the name that is listed or that is accompanied to the picture that I will be showing. All you have to do is just to say fat or bluff. Are you ready? Okay, let's start. So let's have our first picture together with its name. You say if it's fact or bluff. You have three seconds. One, two, three. Is it fact or bluff? Okay, the answer is it's a bluff. It's not a door. Okay, next, let's have the next picture. The next picture says that it's a 90 degree elbow. Do you think it's a 90 degree elbow? Is it fat or bluff? Okay, let's see. It's fat. On the picture is a picture of a 90 degree elbow. Next picture. Okay. Do you think it's correct that on the screen is a gate valve? Is it fact or bluff? One, two, three. Okay, time's up. Let's see. It's fact. Yes, it's a gate ball. Are you doing great? Let's continue. Let's have another picture. On the screen is a toilet. Hmm. Is it a toilet? One, two, three. Fact or bluff? The answer is, it's a bluff. It's not a toilet. Next, let's proceed. 
on the screen is a sink. Do you believe it's a sink? Is it fat or bluff? And it's a bluff. It's not a sink. Later on, you will be knowing what does or what is that picture. If it's not a sink, then what is it? Okay, so let's wait and see. And before we finally continue, you give yourselves five claps for a job well done. One, two, three, four, five. Good work. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, so let's proceed to our discussion for this, this week's module and week six. But before we continue, what I want you to do is to get your modules with you and get ready with your answer sheet as we discuss our week six for this episode. So again, we are now facing week six. So get ready with your modules and your answer sheets with you. Okay, let's start. For the most essential competency or the most essential learning competency of this week, basically it's about how to interpret a layout with a sub competencies that includes explain the meanings of the signs and the symbols used in layouting plan for fish processing activity since it's fish processing, interpret a, a layout plan for fish processing area according to the standard set. So that will be the composition of the most essential learning competencies that we will be focusing on. And for our performance standards, the learners or you will interpret plans and drawings that relate with basic fish processing activities. And to start with, let's have our magic word for the day. Since it is also our topic for this session, our magic word will be lay out. Everybody say lay out. You say lay out. And lay out spells like L A Y O U T. And that's lay out. Again, what is our magic word for today? It's lay out. And when we say lay out, it means a plan, it's arrangement, or a design of something and that's layout again when we say layout it is a plan arrangement design of something and again our magic word for the day is layout okay so now let's go on to our topic for this session which is about how to interpret a plan layout and let us start by defining what is a layout based on how it will be used to our lesson. As we defined it a while ago through our magic word, it is defined as a plan, arrangement, or design of something. But now, we will be defining layout based on our lesson for this session. So when we say layout, since we are dealing with fish processing, Layout is the way facilitates are placed according to a plan. Again, I'll repeat. Layout is the way facilitates are placed according to a plan. It means a layout shows how the parts, the fixtures, or furniture of a certain establishment such as a fish processing area was being put in or arranged according to how it was planned. And the fish processing area should conform according to the standard that is being set by the department or by the bureau. And why do we need to know how to interpret a layout? What is the importance of knowing how to interpret such? Well, one should be able to interpret the layout so as to explain the meanings of the signs and symbols used in layouting to determine the location of the area so that it will be easy for you to determine or to know where such specific locations 
are being put or arranged on that area and this will help the food processor or out or to outgrow the fish processing area needed for the business he will take it will be easier for him to know how things will be done or how things will be processed inside the fish processing area if you already know the layout or the plan of the fixture fixture sorry the furniture that is being put inside that place or the facilities or how we will be able to manage the facilities effectively and that is through knowing the layout seeing the layout and be able to interpret the layout and as we all know it is not only in the field of fish processing we can see layout we can see layouting and how to interpret layout in different areas and this could also be a preparation for you if you wanted to take engineering courses because these are some of the basic things that you should know as you prepare for yourself to be future engineers or architects so next what are the different types of manufacturing layout since we are talking about manufacturing and this is fish processing basically we're about making business we are about manufacturing processing fish we also have different types of manufacturing layout and that includes one the process layout the second a functional layout the third a product or straight line layout the fourth a fixed position layout and the fifth is the cellular manufacturing layout kindly read again the different types of manufacturing layout very good so now let us differentiate these different types and let us go on to the definition or how do these different layouts differ from one another or are they have the same qualities or are they the same or do they have these differences what are those so let's continue when we say okay how do they differ when we say process layout take note of this Process layout is rec recommended for batch production. Let me just repeat. When we say process layout, it is recommended for batch production. All machines performing similar types of operations are grouped at one location in the process layout. Let's say, for example, all lathes, milling machines are grouped in the shop will be clustered in like groups okay and that is process layout they are being grouped or this is this is something or a layout that is recommended for batch promotion and how do these batches were identified they are being identified based on the operations or the group of the location or the functions of those different materials that is being put on a specific location next let me repeat process layout is recommended for batch promotion next we have functional layout and what is functional layout when we say functional layout it is a workplace organization in which processes are organized by the type of the work or the function rather than by value stream or in a cellular configuration where sequential process steps are located in close proximity if the first one is by batch this one the functional layout from the word itself function the workplace organization is being organized by the function what are its functions what are its uses and through that they were able to create the layout based on their functions next we have product or a straight line layout when we say product or straight line layout it is the arrangement of production equipment in order of the manufacturing operations i'll just repeat the other one is for batches the second one is for the function and when we say product or straight line layout it depends upon the operation so the layout depends upon how the process goes 
So line layout is intended to effect an orderly and logical arrangement of productive facilities that will be consistent with large production volume. Because of this kind of layout, the manufacturers will be able to have an effective flow of process, an effective um, use of the layout because it was being arranged according to how the operations goes. So it will be easier for them to do the tasks that they will be doing because it's on a process basis. So that's how it goes. Next is the fixed position layout. Examples of fixed position layout includes larger ship building and airplane manufacturing. Here, since the ship or airplane is too large to be moved around the shop because that is something that's too heavy, we cannot um, get that to move from one place to another because that's too large. The various stages of manufacture, particularly the assembly, are performed in one place by bringing all tools to the plane or the ship. So the people who are working for them adjust themselves. And the, the things that is being used for the production is held right after there so that it will be easier for them to assemble the large ships and the airplane. So that's an example of fixed position layout. We do not move it since it's large, so we adjust for it. So that's fixed position layout. Second, we have cellular manufacturing layout. Cellular manufacturing layout is a type of layout wherein machines are grouped according to the process requirements for a set of similar items, similar items or part families that require similar processing. And these groups are called cells. And therefore, a cellular layout is an equipment layout configured to support cellular manufacturing. First, for, for cellular manufacturing, from the word cells, they are being grouped according to parts or the cells or the parts of the families. And that's what we call cellular uh, manufacturing layout. So again, what are the different types of manufacturing layout? So one, we have process layout, the layout that is being recommended for batches. Next is the functional layout, the one that is being used wherein it is being classified according to functions. We have product or straight line layout, the one that is being used for the operation so that it will be easier for the manufacturing, uh, for the manufacturers to easily um, do the operations or go with the flow of the process and then we have fixed position layout and this one is applicable for large ship buildings and the airplane buildings since we cannot move them from one place to another so it's fixed and the person working for uh, for that adjusts and then the last one is the cellular manufacturing layout from the word itself cellular which means it's being grouped according to parts or cells so that's our five different types of manufacturing layout now let's go on to the parts of a building since we are talking about the layout let's now go on to what's inside that layout and that goes with the different parts of a building so as you can see we have the wall the floors the ceilings the doors and the windows we have the lighting the ventilation the drains the power supply the water supply and the factory yards so this was actually the most important and commonly parts of a building so let's have just a brief description of those so that we will be able to have a sort of review or a sort of definition of such different parts so that you will also be able to identify this part in your houses are you ready okay let's go on so our first part is the wall so a wall should be smooth and waterproof it should be something that could protect us from danger it would be something that would protect us especially when it is raining or during calamities so we have walls so in building 
one of the most important is a wall. So those were an example of wall on your screen. Second are the floors. So the floors are where we step on and should be hard wearing. It should be non-porous. You should not be easily slept, uh, slip there. It should not be slippery. It should be washable. It should be well-drained, non-slip, and resistant to possible attack from brine, weak ammonia, fish oils, and offal. So that's the floor. Next is the ceilings. Okay look up and look at your ceiling so ceilings ideally should be continuous it should be smooth and broken surface that can be easily cleaned and for example the underside of a concrete slab just look at your ceilings and look and see if the description of the ceiling here is just the same with what you can see on your ceilings next we have doors and windows well doors and windows are frames should be of non-porous also it is non-absorbent materials and the wood is not very suitable because if wood or if our uh if no wood is most of the time used but when it comes to uh fish processing manufacturing it is not recommended because um, most of the time there are water there and the possibility is that the doors will be uh, exposed to too much moisture which would lead into it to damage so most of the time they are using in the manufacturing or fish manufacturing they are using this stainless one okay next let's have the lighting so it's important for us to have lighting because good lamp lighting will allow the workers to do their jobs properly without strain because they can easily see everything and expose dirt and other sources of contamination because they will be able to see if there are dirt around so they can easily uh, clean it and they can easily identify which is dirty and which is not so the contaminations will be um, lessened or will be prevented next to lighting is the ventilation so when we say ventilation it is the atmosphere it's the feeling of cold is it the it's the feeling of being hot it's the ventilation it pertains to the atmosphere in fish plants which is commonly it is humid and good ventilation will reduce the nuisance of condensation so it will also avoid the easy spoilage of the fish that they are processing so it's really important that there is proper ventilation because too much hotness may destroy the the processed fish or too much coldness will also destroy what we are doing so there must be proper ventilation next is drains so drains are floor drainage channels which should have easily be removed gratings and should be wide enough to permit brushing out so this is where the water are going through and this are where some of the ways go through so this must be uh, something that is wide and something that has removable gratings so those were drains another one we have the power supply so we have lightings so that means that we should have power supply because we will also be using the power supply for the operations of the machines and when we say power supplies in fish plants they should have provisions not only for the present but for likely future requirements of electricity when wiring in the building so when we say power supply it basically pertains to the electricity or the way how the wirings of the building is being done so that's power supply and that is something that should be taken into consideration since most um most companies more manufacturing uh manufacturing plants are using electricity and as we all know that's one of the basic needs that we actually we are actually having in our lives so that's power supply or the electricity another one is the water supply so since we are dealing with fish we should have generous supply of water and both for 
during the processing of the fish and for cleaning of the fish. That's why storage tanks should also be kept covered because aside from a general supply, it should be something that is clean for us to use since we are dealing with food for proper hygiene and sanitation. So we have water supply. Next is the factory yard. So this is the last one. The whole yards or the whole um, vici uh, the whole vicinity of the factory should have an even impervious surface and must be properly drained to avoid contamination and to avoid um, sickness or to avoid something that would harm others around the factory. That's why it must follow the standards that is given by the Department of, Edu uh, Department of Health sorry, and the Department of Trade and Industry. So again, what are the different parts of the buildings we have? Okay, we have the walls, we have the drainage, very good. What else? We have the factory yards, we have the water supply, very good. We have the power supply, we have the ceilings, and we have the doors and the windows. So now, let's go on to signs and symbols used in drawing a layout. Since our lesson is how to interpret the layout, and for us to know how to draw such different parts of a layout, let's now go on with the signs and symbols used in drawing layout. So we have here, what I want you to know to do is to really remember the the drawing or the layout itself together with its name. So on our screen is a toilet, a sink, the other one is a double sink, but it's also a sink, and we have a range and the refrigerator. Okay, again, I want you to remember how it looks like, okay, on the screen, is a toilet, a sink, the single and the double sink, the range, and the refrigerator. Next, we have, okay, on our screen is the symbols for switch and door. Okay, next, are you ready for the next? Again, remember, switch, and that, that's how it looks like, and a door. Next, we have, okay, it's a gate valve and the lavatory. Okay, again, that's the gate valve, and as you can see, it looks like a wing or wings of, of a butterfly or two triangles facing each other and the other one is a lavatory with LAV on its symbol so that's lavatory so again we have the gate valve and the lavatory next is the one that is being curved at 90 degrees that's why it's called 90 degree elbow again we have on the screen is a 90 degree elbow okay so on your module you can also see the different layout for the different parts of the building so we have closet closet 2 closet 3 closet 4 we have the gas stoves for 2 3 and 4 we have the sink one two and three we have the basin we have the double basin we have the pedestal sink we have the countertop sink we have the dispenser we have the towel rack we have the circular table the circular dry dining sorry we have the dining table we have the oval dining table we have the square table and the ref now it's activity time it's now time to get your activity sheets with you and let me just give you some reminders and instructions as you do your activity
So get it with you and make sure you are holding it right now so you can follow my instructions. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. On the first page of your answer sheet, Entitled G7 TLE Food Processing Quarter 2 Module 1 Answer Sheet for Week 6. Don't forget to write your name, your section, and don't forget to affix the signature of your parents as you finish doing the activity so that they can have a sort of review or recheck if you have answers for all of the items. For the first part is what I know. So all you have to do is just to read the questions and then write the letter of your answer on the space provided for each. Okay. You, all you have to do is just to identify the letter or identify the correct answer by simply um, writing the letter before the number or you can also encircle it, depending on how you are going to put your answers, okay? So that's how you're going to do number uh, part one, which is a multiple choice type of question. And then for part two, you have choices for six to ten. So on the box are the choices all you have to do is just to write the letter of your answer on the space provided before each number and then for part three identify the following signs and symbols used in layout and use the choices listed on the answer sheet so all you have to do is just to simply write the letters as well and then for the independent activity, all you have to do is just to identify the layout that is uh, the signs and the symbols that are being uh, put on your answer sheets and just to write it on the space provided before each number. And then for one of the most important part, I want you to write your realizations on what I have learned. First question, you have to know or you have to write the importance of the layout of the fish processing. And two, you have to write the reasons why a person should have a knowledge in symbols and signs. And then for the additional activities, what I want you to do is to draw a simple layout of your kitchen in a short one paper using the lay uh, using the symbols that we've had a while ago again you just need to draw a simple layout of your kitchen in a short bond paper using the symbols that we've had a while ago so again thank you and good luck to your um to your answer sheets or good luck to your journey as you answer this week's module and if you have questions, just feel free to message me through Messenger or through my Facebook account. You can also contact me through the contact numbers that I gave to you. Again, good luck and God bless. Thank you.